Welcome back everybody. In this video I just wanted to quickly hop on and give a quick introduction to some of the syntax for the Scheme programming language. Now Scheme is not a new language by any stretch of the imagination, but if you've enjoyed the programming, functional programming in JavaScript videos that I've made and are looking for a next language to start playing with, I think Scheme could be a really approachable option. Now if you're more interested in something uh, like Elm than you are something like ClojureScript, you might be a bit more interested in learning Haskell than learning Scheme. But that being said, they'll both give you practice with functional programming and will give you those benefits going forward. So before I drone on too much, let's dive into the basic syntax. Now pretty much everything is surrounded by parentheses and they use prefix notation. I've discussed prefix versus infix notation before, but simply put, it just means that you put the operator first. So if we want to add two numbers, we just push the t put the operator first and then the arguments after. So this will give us five. Same thing for multiplication, we get six. So fairly easy to understand. It just gets a little weird when you have to use things like subtraction, which might get uh, a little bit confusing. Use something like four, three and you get one. You have to remember that order is going to matter if it's not commutative, commutative, commutative things. All right, so next up, if we want to define a variable, uh, we use the word define, and then we write the variable name that we want. I'll just call it num, and we can give it the value of three. That's all it takes to do argument assignment, or variable assignment. Uh, now num has the value of three. We can do the same thing with a list. So if we want to do a list of nums. We can create a list, uh, one, two, three. So we'll put in that list. And then if we look at the value of nums, now we have one, two, three. Fairly cool. So what about defining a function? Obviously, if it, we're doing functional programming, we care a lot about functions. And this is one of the cool things. It treats something like in a variable, which we'd consider data normally, very similarly to how, it's, how functions are treated. So you'll notice the syntax looks very similar. So we can do something like add one. Actually, let's make it more interesting. Let's do add two, because I always do add one. And we'll give it the argument, and then we put the body of the function. So we'll just do plus two to x as it comes in. And now we could do something like add two to num. And remember, num is the value of three, and so we get five. Now that we have a list of numbers and we have a function that operates on numbers, we can map add two over our nums list, and now we have a new list. So we went from one, two, three to three, four, five, because we added two. Fairly straightforward. Uh, now I believe it's something like list ref, and then you give it the list you want, and then the index, yes. So then we could also do something like index two, and that should give us the last, which gives us three. So then this allows you to do something like adding you know, pairs together. If you wanted to take a list of pairs and add those together, you could get the uh, element at index zero and the element at index one, add them together, and you would get a new list of all the sums of all the pairs, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that would be, oh, lambdas. So they have lambdas, and basically that's just an anonymous function. So we could do something like map, and then we could create a lambda. And instead of using something like an arrow function, like we're used to in JavaScript, we write the actual keyword lambda, and then we write our argument list. So this will just be x, and then the body of our function. I'll just put it all in one line just to confuse you all x plus, let's do plus 3, and then we can do something like uh, nums, and if I've written this correctly, we should end up with a new list of nums plus 3. And there we go, we did. So if you look at it, we have our outer wrapping of the lambda, then we have the body of the lambda here, and then we have the argument list here and then the parentheses around the entire thing on the outside. So 
that's the basic introduction to Scheme. It's a very small language, small meaning that it doesn't have a lot of variation in syntax. Everything is prefix. Uh, you use function application with spaces, which is something that's consistent also with Haskell. So, for example, when we did uh, add two, I think is what we call it. Yeah, add two and num. That space in between is how you're applying the add to function to the argument, which is pretty interesting. So I would highly recommend that if maybe you're not feeling Haskell and you want to try out another language, give Scheme a try. If Scheme doesn't really tickle your fancy, <laughs> then I guess you could try Haskell or any other number of programming languages that have functional programming built in, which even a lot of object-oriented programming languages these days do. You can do things like map, reduce, filter, those sorts of things in even a language like Ruby, which I write uh, most of the time now. So anyway, hope you found this interesting. I'll be hopping back on, I think, tomorrow with a more substantial video, if I can get that recorded in time. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.